on the radical socialist agenda. What does that mean? Well, number one, we have a majority in the House of Representatives. That, that is incredibly important. Uh, the majority that we have in the House needs to stand up and fight. I think the leadership fight that we had on the floor of the House was very important. I think that the rebels extracted promises from leadership that make it much more likely that we will see this House majority actually stand and fight. One of the consequences of having a House majority uh, is that really bad legislation, the kind of legislation Biden has been ramming through for the last two years, that legislation should be dead on arrival. A massive tax increase should be dead on arrival. All of the Green New Deal should be dead on arrival with a Republican Congress. That is important. Secondly, a Republican House gives us the ability to have real and meaningful oversight in the House. I'm working closely with my House colleagues to have hearings, to have hearings on China, have hearings on the weaponization of the Department of Justice and the FBI, to use subpoena power to hold this administration accountable. Thank you. Number three, in the Senate, we need to use the leverage we have. I am now the ranking member, the senior Republican on the Senate Commerce Committee. <laughs> Just today, from my position as the ranking member of the, of the Commerce Committee, I announced a full investigation into big tech and big tech censorship, devoting our resources to exposing how big tech is targeting conservatives, silencing conservatives, and fighting against free speech. We need to use our resources to fight the abuses of the left. And then in particular, we need also the lever points, the two most significant lever points that Congress is going to have this year are number one, the funding of the federal government, and number two, the debt ceiling. My view is that we should use both of those to press for real and meaningful reforms that start to address the out-of-control spending and the out-of-control debt that is bankrupting our country and that is driving crippling inflation. It doesn't mean we have to solve everything all at once, but we should use the leverage we have to force the Democrats to the table and to make concessions. And, and, and I will point out, for those Republicans who always seem to believe, well, gosh, we can't fight, we can't fight, we can't fight, let me point out a fight that we just fought and won a big victory on. In December, Joe Biden and the administration finally agreed to end their illegal and abusive COVID vaccine mandate in the military. I led the fight for two years against all of the COVID vaccine mandates, whether in the military, whether across the federal government, whether with private contractors, whether with private employers, all of them were fundamentally wrong. The school mandates are fundamentally wrong. It ought to be your choice whether or not you take the COVID va vaccine. Well, for months, Democrats and the media and even some Republicans said, well, Biden will never give in, Biden will never give in, Biden will never give, give in. I stood with other conservatives in the Senate and said in December, we will not allow to pass the National Defense Authorization Act unless the COVID vaccine mandate is ended and what happened is Biden and the Democrats blinked, and they ended the mandate. Now, I will say, unfortunately, the price the Democrats put on that is it, it is that the it is that the repeal is prospective only, meaning it is only going forward. It doesn't provide relief to the thousands or even tens of thousands of servicemen and women that Joe Biden wrongfully fired because they declined to take the COVID vaccine. So I'd introduced legislation called the Americans Act that would allow any serviceman or woman terminated to, to re-enter the, the military at, at, at their previous rank to, to receive the benefits to which they're entitled. And, and, and I'll tell you, I'll give my word, I will not stop fighting until every soldier and sailor and airman and Marine and Coast Guardsman gets justice and this injustice is reversed, but it's worth reflecting. We won a big victory two months ago and we will keep winning victories if we stand and fight for principle, smart and effective. And if we draw a line in the sand and say, here is where we stand, that's how we win these fights.